Welcome! This is the first of a selection of videos that will provide some examples of master thesis projects. The master thesis projects we present were all written in the international business lines. That is, either in the context of a master program called International Business and Management or in a master program called International Business and Marketing. Let me first give you some key facts on our master thesis. Master thesis provide 30 European credit points and correspond to six months of full-time work, including the grading and defense. Grading will be done by the supervisor from SDU, as well as by an external examiner. Grading will be done according to the Danish seven-point scale. The seven-point scale includes different marks where the 12 is the best you can achieve. Master thesis projects can be done individually, that is, you write your own thesis, or you can write a master thesis in a group, usually of two students. Master thesis topics can focus on theory and research related aspects and can also involve business challenges that will be tackled in cooperation with a company. In this video, we will give you an example of a very good master thesis that has achieved a 12. The topic is the impact of cultural diversity on team performance and global virtual teams, a cultural intelligence perspective. It was written by two candidates, one from the International Business and Management and one from the International Business and Marketing program in 2019. The two candidates used a data set that was collected in the context of the X Culture project, on which you will find more information by looking at the website which is given here on the slide. I will now leave the floor to Valeria and Sophie, who will present their findings and their overall project. Hello, uh, so we are here today to present and discuss our master thesis. I am Sophie and I have studied a master degree in international business and management. And I'm Valerie and I have studied a master degree in international business and marketing. So we have over the past four months written our master thesis together, uh, which consisted of evaluating the impact of cultural diversity on team processes and team outcomes in global virtual teams, uh, with a specific perspective on cultural intelligence. Uh, this master thesis was supervised by Nicole Francisca Risha, an associate professor in the Department of Marketing and Management at the University of Southern Denmark. And uh, so we have presented here our, our agenda for the presentation today. Uh, first, we'll present the objectives of our research. Then we will go into the theoretical framework and methodology used to answer both our research questions. Then we will briefly go through our analysis and results found and what implications they had on main theories and management practices, along with our suggestions for further research. And finally, we'll provide a conclusion. So first of all, why was this research relevant? Well, due to a combination of external forces, uh, such as economic and demographic factors, uh, and the rapidly evolving te technological development we are experiencing today, companies have been forced to expand their scope of teams beyond the traditional bureaucratic structures and form what is known as global virtual teams in order to remain competitive. A global virtual team is usually known as a, a temporary group uh, with members from different cultural backgrounds, uh, geographically dispersed and communicating through technological platforms. And the problem with uh, using global virtual team is that there is a high level of cultural diversity, which is known to generate differences in communication styles, working practices and collaboration among the team members, and also to increase the level of conflicts. And these negative impacts can cause a significant loss of efficiency and therefore cause companies to lose the benefit behind using global virtual teams. So there is quite an important need for managers to understand how cultural diversity affects the performance of global virtual teams and also how they can minimize the negative impacts of cultural diversity. So with this in mind, uh, our first objective of the research was to determine how cultural diversity impacts the generation of intermediate team outcomes in global virtual teams, um, <clears throat> specifically the level of creativity, the level of conflicts, communication effectiveness, the level of satisfaction, and how well members socially integrate. This part of the research is actually inspired by a meta-analysis of research conducted by Stahl, Mesnevsky, Voigt, and Johnson in 2010, who did the same analysis using the same model presented here, but their results led to unclear or no conclusions. So we saw the need to test this model again and potentially provide more results and insight in this manner. 
Our second objective of this research was to then test the moderating effect of cultural diversity on the relationships between cultural diversity and intermediate team outcomes in global virtual teams. So our aim here is really to determine whether having a certain level of cultural intelligence in global virtual teams uh, could help minimize the negative impacts of cultural diversity. So now going into the theoretical framework used to answer both our research questions presented here on the left, uh, we use three main groups of theories. The first one being the first one being cultural diversity, including surface and deep level diversity. Uh, this allowed us to get a clear distinction between the different levels of diversity and also gain an understanding of their impact on team processes and team outcomes. Uh, then we have the impact of cultural diversity on team performance, uh, which include the similarity attraction theory, the social identity and social categorization theories, and the information processing theory, which all helped us identify the mechanisms through which diversity influences team, and also get a good understanding of how and why people behave the way they do in cross-cultural settings. Then finally, we have cultural intelligence. Uh, where we looked into the four dimensions of cultural intelligence, uh, which include uh, cognitive cultural intelligence, metacognitive cultural intelligence, motivational cultural intelligence, and behavioral cultural, cultural intelligence. Uh, since cultural intelligence predicts the ability for an individual to adapt to culturally diverse settings and focuses on settings and interactions characterized by cultural diversity, this provided us with a good idea of how effective cultural diversity intelligence and its four dimensions can be in minimizing the negative aspect aspects of cultural diversity in global virtual teams. So overall, this theoretical framework gave us a really good foundation of knowledge and understanding of how people behave in culturally diverse settings. So what methodology did we use to answer these research questions? Um, well, in terms of our scientific position, we took a positivist and critical realist approach since we tried to keep an objective view throughout the whole process, knowing that the real world exists independently of our perceptions. Uh, we used existing theories to develop hypotheses, all in the attempt to get closer to the reality of cultural diversity's impact on these intermediate team outcomes. We also kept in mind the importance of multi-level study, uh, knowing that each of the levels has the capacity to change our understanding of our study. Uh, we also perceive the social world as constantly changing, uh, which means that our results might not be applicable in the future. Then in terms of the research design, our study is both, is both explanatory and exploratory. The explanatory part covers our first research question about the impact of cultural diversity and intermediate team outcomes in global virtual teams, where we either confirm or reject the results found by the meta-analysis conducted by Stahl et al. Uh, the exploratory part covers our second research question, where we attempt to explore the moderating effects of cultural intelligence on the relationships between cultural diversity and the intermediate team outcomes. Uh, then to gather knowledge, we use the primary and quantitative data collected through the X culture project, uh, which allowed us to use a sample of 969 global virtual teams, uh, all presented by a total of 4,522 students, uh, both MBA and graduate students, all from 118 different countries. So the characteristics of this ex cultural project fit very well within the, our research needs and gave us an ideal opportunity to assess the relationships of our research model through the Smart PLS tool. So Valeria will now take over and go through the analysis of our research model, which was tested in four different versions. Okay, let's take a look on our base model, uh, which is correspond to the direct relationship between cultural diversity and five intermediate team outcomes, and which is aimed to answer our first research question. First of all, we can see in the model that cultural diversity in global virtual teams of our study did not influence on how creative and innovative the teams were. Therefore, we believe that other factors rather than cultural diversity can be taken into consideration. For instance, is a team member previous work experience or level of education? Moving forward, in a base model, we can see that cultural differences within the global virtual teams of our study do not represent the cause of any type of conflict. This further means that if teams have experienced any type of conflict throughout their project, it was triggered by other factors, for instance, personality traits, level of intelligence, or level of education. Furthermore, our findings here show that cultural diversity did not have an, if, an effect in how effective team members of the global virtual teams communicated with one another. 
Again, we think that other factors rather than cultural diversity may influence communication effectiveness. Such factors include low level of experience working in a virtual team among team members or problems with technology used to communicate. Moreover, we think that students may have been well briefed about tasks and their team members prior to the project start date. And also, we believe that they were highly motivated to successfully complete the project in order to pass their course and did therefore not let the cultural differences interfere with how effective they perform. Then, although we predicted the negative relationship between cultural diversity and satisfaction, our findings here show a positive relationship between two variables. We suppose this positive linkage may have been caused by the idea that students of this research have potentially experienced a high learning curve and personal growth when participating in the project. Further, they might have shown an interest and greater curiosity in working with people from other cultures. Finally, our results from the base model show that members of cultural diversity, uh, cultural diverse teams have a harder time to socially integrate in global virtual settings. We believe that can be related to a cultural diversity strong association with the similarity attraction and social categorization theories, which make social processes and cooperation more difficult. Further, as the students are only involved in this project for two months and need to complete it to pass their course, they are most likely only focusing on passing the course and not interesting in building social relationships with their team members. Uh, in order to answer our second research question, we will jump into the Model C, which illustrates the moderating effect of CQ on the relationship between cultural diversity and five intermediate team outcomes. The analysis specified that, only, uh, that all moderating effects of CQ dimensions are insignificant, except one related to the relationship between cultural diversity and social integration. These results are totally interrelated with the results obtained from the base model. That's why we uh, think that team members with a greater willingness to learn new cultures and readiness to interact effectively in the global virtual teams can more likely overcome cultural barriers towards normal social integration. Those high level of CQ would help to diminish the influence of cultural diversity and social integration obtained from the base model. But let's now take a look on the research model A, where we include such control variables as team size, gender, and English score. We can see that all three control variables only have a slight impact on five intermediate team outcomes. Although the impact is minor, it is still more important and significant than the impact of cultural diversity. It can be also seen here that adding the control variables to our model improves the explanatory power of the five intermediate team outcomes. And actually those results lead us to the idea that maybe other variables or a combination of variables can better describe the concept of creativity, conflict, communication effectiveness, satisfaction, and social integration. Uh, that would lead us to the model B. Uh, and model B illustrates the direct influence of two exogenous variables, including cultural diversity and cultural intelligence on five intermediate team outcomes. As can be seen from rather good pass coefficient and the T values, cultural intelligence has the strongest positive impact on satisfaction, which we believe indicates on team members' enthusiasm to work in the multicultural settings. But it also has a very strong positive relationship to creativity, conflict, communication, effectiveness, and social integration, which uh, we relate to the nature of CQ and is aimed to facilitate knowledge sharing, openness, and willingness to listen and to understand how others think and communicate. Uh, that would turn us to the implication of our results, because actually the key findings of this study offer several implications for theory and for management practice. First of all, they contribute to cultural diversity theory, and especially to the results generated by Stahl et al. meta-analysis of cultural diversity research by confirming almost all of their findings. Further, the exploratory part of the study contributes to the CQ literature, by introducing CQ and its four dimension into the interaction model of cultural diversity and five intermediate outcomes of team performance. Regarding the managerial implication of our findings, we suggest companies to organize some face-to-face -face meetings or social events for the global virtual team members to meet and to get to know each other better, which we believe can actually help to overcome difficulties caused by cultural diversity. 
Another way for companies to overcome those difficulties would be to have a team leader with expertise in cultural diversity management assigned to each global virtual team from the beginning of the project. We also believe that cultural intelligence is an important aspect to consider when companies form global virtual teams for their projects. So we suggest special secure education and training program that can be used as a great tool to increase team members' secure level and to generate effective knowledge and information sharing both within the global virtual teams and across company boundaries. Uh, but the important question here, what could be improved for future research? And uh, let's jump first to the cultural diversity. Um, so here we think that aspect that is interesting to take into consideration in a future research is time tenure. Since team members do not know each other in the beginning of the project, we think that cultural differences between them will have significantly more impact than in the later stage of the project. We also believe that for future research, it is absolutely necessary to expand cultural diversity construct with a broader range of indicators, uh, which would help to better reflect the concept of diversity in the modern society and the modern settings. Further, due to the lack of impact cultural diversity has on intermediate team outcomes and global virtual teams, uh, we see the need to replace the cultural diversity construct with another independent variable that might have a more important impact today. The example of such construct is trust or media usage, for example. But let's now uh, move to the uh, methodology, uh, in, in methodology part and that could be improved in this case. We believe that future research could be based on a team level analysis rather than individual one. For this purpose, it's absolutely necessary to collect answers from all team members and form a complete set of uh, team level data. Moreover, we think that the survey itself can be improved by making it shorter and addressing to fit the exact research agenda, which consequently will improve the response rate. We also suggest that extension of this research would be to test the same models, but in a real company settings to understand and to test the influence of cross-cultural differences in the global virtual teams on the employees' work processes with the organizational factors included as impacts. And lastly, uh, our suggestion uh, relates to the cultural intelligence and first of all to the assessment of CQ construct. We believe that beside the well-known CQ scale, some antecedents of CQ, such as the amount of years of intercultural experience, the language skill, a cultural background, or others can be used. And at the same time, more objective methods, such as direct observation and peer evaluation, can be used to assess cultural intelligence construct during data collection. Finally, we see the real need for researchers to explore the degree to which the cultural intelligence and cultural values of one or a few team members can influence the whole team. Because maybe there is uh, no need for all team members to have a high level of CQ, but only for one or for a few of them to have it. So to uh, conclude, uh, we, we saw really two main conclusions from our study. The first one being that cultural, intelligence, cultural diversity has no substantial impact on intermediate team outcomes in global virtual teams. Uh, which is potentially due to the fact that people nowadays are used to working with people from different cultural backgrounds and are therefore not affected by the difficulties cultural diversity in a team can cause. The second one is that cultural intelligence proved to have quite a significant positive direct impact on the five intermediate team outcomes, which means that cultural intelligence has a val very valuable role in the well-functioning and good performance of global virtual teams. So therefore, our main suggestion and conclusion of our paper is that future researchers should focus on examining more the level of CQ needed for a global virtual team to perform well. Thank you. Thank you. We hope that you are as impressed as we were about the work that the two ladies handed in. If you want to find out more about our two international business lines, you can explore our websites, which are given here in the slide, and provide all relevant information from entry over program structure to admission. For further information, please also feel free to get in touch with me. You will find my email address here.
I'm looking very much forward to welcoming you here in Odense or to see you in the context of your master thesis process. Take care.